<laughs> All right, there we go, recording in progress. Okay, and now I've gone and hid myself, hid myself for you. I'm just gonna spotlight myself for you. Okay, well, thank you so much for, for like I say, making some time uh, to get together. And uh, one of the real benefits of being an early adopter at Co Academy, this is a really exciting time for us. It is our first year that we are expanding up uh, at the moment, we're operating grades four to nine, and uh, we have seen wonderful growth over the last year in our grade four to nine pods. Um, they're absolutely exploding at the seams. Um, our staff has more than tripled, uh, which I'll, I'll share with you in a, in a moment. And um, we're really excited this year, not just about the expansion laterally in our grade four to, 12, four to nine pods, we're, ex we're excited to be extending upwards as well. Uh, grades 10 and 11 uh, open at the moment. And uh, into next year, obviously our first grade 12 matrix uh, will be writing and, and we're really excited about that as well. And so those of you who are in grade 11 at Co Academy, uh, you will be amongst our first matriculants in 2023, which is really exciting for us. And I think a real benefit to you um, when you see some of the, the caliber of staff that we have on board, um, being a part of uh, something at this stage in its growth is really exciting for a couple of reasons. Firstly. Uh, we're very versatile and light on our feet. And so we really want to encourage you um, as parents to reach out to us regularly. Keep us in the loop. We're big on engagement. So we want to be engaging with you regularly. We want to be hearing about your experiences and seeing if there are any needs that we can be meeting that we're not yet meeting. Uh, so we're, we're quite um, adaptable in that way. And it also means that in terms of uh, student to teacher ratio, we are absolutely winning in this area. I mean, we could not ask for better in terms of uh, individualized attention for every child that's in grade 10 and 11 at this point. I mean, this is the dream. And uh, we know that we're going to grow. We know that we're going to expand. But for now, we really want to tap into that benefit of being early adopters um, amongst the first to expand in grade 10 to 11 and the benefits that come along with that uh, in, in terms of sort of the access that we have to excellent teaching um, at Co. So, Let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen with you. And I'll, I'll get cracking. All right. So we're just going to go through some general information. Um, at the moment, when I'm screen sharing, I, I don't have any of you on my screen. So if you do want to interrupt, just uh, shout out loud. Um, uh, but this is just some helpful general information about um, our staffing and our curriculum and practically um, how your children are going to access um, their work and access their classes starting from tomorrow, which is the launch of our orientation. Um, so as I've said a few times, we're really excited about the staff that are joining us. Um, we are expanding and we've got staff all over the country and now joining the team. Uh, we're spread out certainly across all of the major centers, but I think across most of the provinces as well. There might be one or two provinces that we're not yet in, um, but we're certainly hitting a lot of them. And, and we're really excited about everybody that's coming on board and joining us. And uh, uh, we'll be introducing them to you over the coming weeks. Uh, we want you to get to know each of your child's teachers in the various subject areas. So we'll be asking them to reach out to you and to introduce themselves to you. And if you would like to be in touch with any of us, um, our email addresses at Co Academy. Um, and I'll chat about communications a little bit later on, but our email addresses are typically our first name as staff, uh, followed by at coacademy.com. So if you want to get in touch with me, you can drop me an email, mark at coacademy.com. Uh, but I'd like to take a moment just to introduce a couple of our staff to you. So let me stop sharing again and uh, let's see who all is in the house tonight. Um, let's start with um, Benita, I see Benita. Benita will give you a wave. Benita is our Afrikaans teacher. And I see Jessica. Jessica's over there. Jessica is taking care of our physical sciences as well as our mathematical literacy. I see Neil in the corner of my screen. How's it, Neil? Neil will be doing our business studies. And he's also our math subject specialist for grades seven, eight, and nine. Um, who else have I missed? I see a couple of pod teachers have come in from the grade four to nine pods. I see Garth. How's it, Garth? Garth is over there. 
um, and he is our self-proclaimed maths geek and he'll be doing our grade 10 and 11 core maths really excited to have you on board guy and i'm going to hand over briefly to jason uh, jason is our head of academics and also overseeing our history which is a wonderful combination for us uh, once you've heard this guy talking about history you will want to audit his history classes um, I, I'm more excited about history than I've ever been in my life, just because of the last few weeks of, of having planned and prepped with Jason. Um, but he comes with a, a lot of experience from his previous post head of operations at a, a large school in Cape Town. And um, he, he is a fantastic educator as well as a fantastic organizer of academic programs. So we're really excited and lucky to have him on our team. But I'm just going to ask Jason to chat a little bit more about what you can expect in terms of your grade 10, 11, and 12 experience. Because as you'll see in the presentation tonight, for those of you who were with Co Academy in grade four to nine, grade 10 is a significant change. There are significant changes from grade nine to grade 10. Um, some of those are legislative, some of them are academic. And so Jason's gonna to chat to you a little bit about uh, what to expect in some of those areas. Thanks, Jason. Good evening, ladies and gents. So firstly, welcome to COA. We're really excited to have you. We've been spending since Monday planning like crazy people getting our academic program up and ready. We have an amazing staff who are rearing and waiting to get into class. They cannot wait. Um, very excited. I would like to first uh, highlight that we are an IEB school and just to let you know what that means is we have a slightly different um, assessment program to the traditional NSC and CAPS but for any of you who are coming from an NSC or CAPS background please don't stress your child is not behind if they haven't been in an IEB school the curriculum is the same so the assessment standards will be slightly different um, they're more vigorous we focus on far more about explanations and grappling with knowledge rather than just straightforward recall. So we're focused on the higher order thinking skills and that's what we're here to prepare you for. Um, I personally don't really like talking about grade 10 or grade 11. I like to call it matric 2023 and matric 2024. It gives you a much clearer understanding of where we're going. Um, unfortunately, schools really are defined by their results. You can talk about all the other extracurricular things that it's great. We love to create well-rounded learners, but ultimately at the end of the day, our success rides and falls on our pass rates and what our academic results look like. And we are here to push excellence. That's really what our end game is. We see the value in having individual contact time with your learners. Um, I love the pod concept and no more than eight in the class. It really is something that I'm really excited about. Um, hopefully I get some more history students. I I'm super passionate about history and currently there is only one in grade 10 and one in grade 11. So please come join me, come to the land of history. Uh, I'm lucky that I'm talking because I feel like all the other subject teachers would also be pushing their subjects here and telling you how wonderful they are. Unfortunately, I have the mic. So um, yeah, it's the journey to grade 12 is a tough one. We're, we're not gonna sugarcoat it. Um, the pace is hectic but it doesn't matter what school you're at, the pace is hectic. There is a clear jump from grade nine into grade 10, and then again into grade 11. We are going to do everything we can to ensure that we are mirroring the grade 12 standard all the way from the beginning, from grade 10. That way, I like to talk about it as grade 12 round one, which would be your grade 10 year, grade 12 round two, your grade 11 year, and then grade 12, the final. This is where you really are going to be going full tilt and getting in 12 content areas in by August and ready to write exams. So I'm not sure what I'm missing. We've spoken about pacing. We're aiming for grade 12 academic excellence. We do have a far more rigorous assessment structure. So for those of you who are returning parents, um, what you'll notice about the difference, the biggest difference between our grade 10 and our grade nine and why we have that clear separation um, is that you can't 
fall behind. You need to be able to work ahead, but learners can't fall too far behind because uh, they just won't make it to their assessments. So that's something we do need to keep in mind. Um, however, we do have pod teachers who will be monitoring that. And the joy of the small ratios is that you do have access to your teachers and we are monitoring rigorously so it's not like you're going to be lost in a class of 200 learners we have all the attention that you need and you are our key priority and our focus and i think i had eight minutes and have been going for about six mark is there anything i'm missing or that you would like me to add that's great thank you jason i appreciate that and uh i'm sure that as we go um you'll be having more and more questions for jason along the way um, Jason might well be somebody that you uh, end up having some meetings with um, if there are things that you'd like to chat through in terms of your child's academic program, or you'd like to look at something like their subject choices in more detail, or you'd like to talk about their exit point, about their progress in a particular subject. Jason's going to be somebody that I'm sure you'll, you'll be chatting to more in the future. So good to meet you, Jason. Thank you very much. And uh, I think one of the words that, that Jason used a few times there was rigorous. Uh, we want to provide a robust academic launch pad for your child into whatever they're heading into after school, whether they'll be applying for universities or for jobs. Um, we are wanting to set them up for success in the real world. And so when we think about our academic program, uh, and this also came through in how Jason shared, we think about our academic program right from grade four to grade 12 as one cohesive launch pad into the real world. Uh, we want to really set them up for success. We don't want them to be surprised by anything when they get to grade 12. We don't want them to be surprised by anything when they hit uh, the wide world of work or, or of university. And so Jason doesn't just talk about grade, nine to, uh, grade 10, 11, and 12. He'll talk about grade four being the class of 2031 uh, because that's really where we're headed. Um, and so everything that we do, we want it to be geared for real life and preparing them for real life and at the same time age appropriate and as your children are reaching grade 10 11 and 12 things like academic rigor are age appropriate things like more structured assessment protocols are age appropriate and so as we start to build those things in and we don't hit them with it on day one uh, we introduce them to it quickly uh, because we need to get into the swing of things quickly in grade 10 uh, but we do introduce it to them uh, in a scaled way and in a way that actually empowers them and encourages them that you actually now should have the self-discipline and the drive and the motivation and uh, uh, to succeed in this high-paced, uh, rigorous environment. Um, you'll see as we go uh, that we're still building in the other part of our name, Coa Academy. Uh, the, the wood of a Coa tree, you've probably heard me saying this at some point along the way, the wood of a koa tree is famous for being both flexible and strong. Uh, it's famous for being uh, malleable and at the same time robust. And so you've heard a lot already uh, this afternoon of us talking about academic robustness in our, in our academic program for the, the FET phase. At the same time, we're going to be building in flexibility and individualization, both for your child in terms of their strengths and their interests and their passions, but also for you as a family in terms of what your family needs and your your particular context and situation. All right, so let me get back to my presentation and I'll carry on from there. Okay, the other staff member that I'd love to introduce you to, he's unfortunately not available this evening to join us in this session, but he will be with us tomorrow morning and uh, your, your children will be meeting him in our very first uh, COA gathering. Uh, it's our new head of culture, who is Majozi, the much loved a uh, South African musician, um, Salmon nominated, and we're really excited for him personally. He's just reached over a million plays for his hit single, Darling, on Apple Music. So well done, Majorzi, for, for reaching that milestone in your career. But also, he is bringing a wealth of experience and knowledge into the cultural space in Kora Academy. Now, because we're in the grade 10 to 12 space, we know that a lot of our work time is dedicated to our subject areas. As Jason said, it's a very full program for grades 10 to 12. But one of Majorzi's roles for us is helping us to identify, firstly, how we as a staff can be on the lookout for young men and women who show an inclination towards the arts or the culture in a particular way that we can nurture and inspire and encourage. So he's coming with real world um, experience. He's coming with 
uh, contacts and um, a perspective on the arts and culture, which is not just theoretical. He lives and breathes this. And uh, uh, secondly, he's able to then interact with the kids and, and bring that uh, right into, into sort of their experience. Keep an eye out for new and exciting things from Jawsey. He's also going to be addressing you as parents to talk to you about how to fully leverage the benefits of unbundling your child's education. So by signing up with Co Academy to be your school, what you're doing is you're choosing to unbundle what was traditionally a one-stop shop for education, where your local physical school was not just the academic program and the culture and the sport, but also things like discipline and life skills. And we, we used to see schools as a bundled uh, a sort of service provider for all things that have to do with my child being raised. And uh, what we see now is, as with any technology that goes through a life cycle, that no longer makes sense. It no longer makes sense uh, uh, in terms of resources and expense. We all know how expensive private schools are in South Africa, um, and we're paying for all of the services and only tapping into a certain percentage of them. And at the same time, uh, we're missing out on opportunities that aren't necessarily being offered by our school. And so with the unbundling of education, we are suddenly freed up with time and resources to be able to lean into our child's particular strengths and interests. And so he's going to be helping us uh, think through that and really address that from a family perspective. Uh, let's get on to the academic and some of the more practical things for what's to come in the next few days and weeks. Uh, let's start with learner orientation. So our learners are joining us tomorrow and Friday for orientation, and that'll be both days they can expect to be busy with us between 8.30 and 12. Um, if they log on to their Google calendars, they'll see the first invite for the first session at 8.30. They can join the Google Meet through their Google Calendar, and once they've joined that session, we'll be explaining the rest of the program to them and releasing the rest of the links for them to join, and they'll then be able to join the different sessions. Uh, they'll be meeting with me as the principal to talk through some school-wide issues. They'll meet with Jason to talk through some of the academics. They'll also meet with him one-on-one -on -one to finalize their subject choices. Uh, they'll meet with their subject teachers to get some insight into their subjects. And they'll also meet with their pods to start to develop some of those relationships and friendships which are going to carry them through uh, the coming years. Uh, this is for all new and returning learners. Uh, it's, it's relevant for everyone, whether this is your first year at COA or you are coming back for more. In terms of IT setup and supports, uh, this is a really important thing for you to think through uh, before they log on tomorrow morning at 8.30. So firstly, please make sure that you have logged them into their COA Academy account. You should have received an email from it at coaacademy.com with the login details uh, for how to access the COA account. And it's powered by Google, so it gives them full access to the Google Workspace and will be working out of uh, Gmail, Google Drive, Google Docs, um, and so on. And so make sure that you've logged them in. And our recommendation is that you use the Chrome browser just because it's a Google product and it very easily syncs them across uh, the Google apps and remembers who they are and easily logs them in as they navigate between different platforms. So if they're working in Google Classroom and it sends them to a Google Doc, if they're logged into the Chrome browser, it automatically logs them into their new platform. So we really encourage you to download the Chrome browser and don't just log them into their Co Academy accounts uh, in Gmail, log them into the Chrome browser as well. If you click on the top right corner, uh, you'll be able to sync the Chrome browser and log it into the Co Academy account. Once you've done that, please run a line speed test. And for this line speed test, run it from their machine at their workstation. Um, I'll tell you why I say this is because typically we know what our line speed is based on what we've purchased from our service provider. But in reality, our actual line speed connection is always lower than whatever our line speed is with our service provider. And that's because of things like um, how efficient the computer is, how far it is from the modem, and so on. And so we would really encourage you log them in and then run a speed test. That's www.speedtest.net. And uh, it'll tell you your upload and download speed. And for Co Academy, we require at least 10 megabytes per second up and down. And uh, that 10 megabytes per second download is per person in the house who's connected at the same time. So if you're working from home while your child is doing their schoolwork, then we would need 20 megabytes per second 
uh, download speed, just to make sure that while they're in live sessions or while they're accessing their different work platforms, that that connection is, is seamless. Um, one of the things that we probably see as most important uh, in the online space is removing barriers. We know that your experience of uh, uh, online schooling is only going to be as good as your technology allows. And so we really encourage you be really intentional about the computer that you set them up on. Um, the entry level specs are generally good enough for, for schooling. And so it's not too demanding in terms of what type of machine you need to purchase. Um, as long as it's in good working order and meets those minimum requirements and you keep it up to date. Um, one of the conversations I have uh, occasionally with parents uh, when their child's computer isn't quite working is um, where did this computer come from? And uh, sometimes I get the answer that, well, it used to be my work computer and it was giving me problems. So I bought a new one and I gave this one to my child for their schooling. And my answer is always, well, you know, if it was giving you problems at work, it's probably giving your child problems in their schooling. So really do set them up for success with their machine as well as the, the internet connection that they have there. That said, in terms of load shedding, um, there are a couple of things in play here. The first is anything that your child misses because of load shedding. If it is a live session, they'll be able to watch recordings of that. We try not to uh, have too many live sessions which would need to be re-watched post case. But if there are live teaching sessions and a child misses it for load shedding or if they're ill for a day, all of those sessions will be recorded and available to them. We really encourage you though, particularly for the grade 10, 11 and 12 uh, program, which is a little bit more synchronized and I'll talk more to that in a moment. We really encourage you to get some sort of backup for your Wi-Fi at least. If your child is working on a laptop, which has battery power, uh, we encourage them to work on their laptop plugged in for the majority of the day so that the battery is always charged. And then if the power drops out for load shedding, they can work off of their laptop battery power. And we encourage you to get a uh, mini UPS, uh, which is a, a small device about this size that sits behind your, your Wi-Fi modem and plugs in between the, the wall sockets and your Wi-Fi modem. And that'll give you about three to four hours of battery life. And everything else in the house can bomb off and your child can carry on working on their laptop and the Wi-Fi will be uninterrupted. So that's a, a fairly economical and uh, uh, efficient way to keep them connected during the day. Um, if you have any IT related questions or queries or tomorrow morning, if somebody is struggling to log in and they can't connect to the, to the session, please won't you get in touch with it at coacademy.com. Uh, Debbie is manning the IT station for us and uh, she is uh, a fantastic IT guru and specialist and has loads of experience in the IT department. And she's going to be running that for us and uh, overseeing any of the tech queries that you might have. Um, you're also welcome to, to email her for any recommendations. Uh, just to say on that tomorrow morning, um, if, you, if you're struggling to get a hold of IT because there's a lot of queries coming in, feel free to pick up the phone and call the Coa Academy uh, phone as well. And uh, uh, Tegan will be online there waiting to help you with, with any backup queries. Okay. Let's chat a bit about the academic program. So first, let me walk you through what the program looks like um, in general. What I'm about to describe now, and I'll reiterate this in a moment, what I'm about to describe now will be the status quo from term two onwards. So what I'm about to describe now is not exactly how it'll work for term one. First, I want to set the stage for you for how things are going to work from term two onwards. Uh, the second quarter of the year going forwards, and you'll see how there is greater flexibility that's going to be built in our systems as we go and as we develop. Uh, your child's day will typically be sp split up into different types of engagement. The first type that you can see on the screen here is called PodConnect. PodConnect is uh, being drawn up. For those of you who were a part of our grade four to nine program, we have a significant part of our day called PodConnect that's being pulled up into grade 10, 11, and 12, where your child will meet with their pod of only eight with a teacher. That teacher um, might not even be a subject teacher of theirs. It'll be a mentor teacher who's a part of Coa Academy. And that uh, mentor teacher will be their pod teacher and will meet with them. Um, our PodConnect sessions happen twice a week. They happen on Mondays and Wednesdays from quarter past eight until nine. 
And those sessions are social emotional development, relationship building, connecting with others in my pod and in my grade, um, and also just getting general guidance from my pod teacher. So that's happening at least twice a week. And some of those sessions, the teacher will set the children up to actually start doing a learner-led pod connects as well. Um, we're wanting to give our, our young men and women more and more opportunities to lead themselves and lead each other in different aspects of school life. Um, Jason talks about vertical connections, where we also want to have uh, pollination from grade 12 down to grade 10 and even further down where we're visiting each other's pods and, and involved in helping each other through classwork or study groups. And so you'll see more of that filtering through as well. But the pod connect time is really where we do a lot of our interaction and engagement to stay well connected. The other three that you see on the screen, the masterclass, the workshops and the coursework are how we address the academic content. So this is our academic delivery of all of the different subjects. Masterclasses typically happen once a week. For a masterclass, a subject specialist uh, will host a live 45 minute seminar style class to handle critical content, content and difficult concepts. Okay, so you can think of this as most resembling a typical university lecture where your lecturer is giving you key concepts, key ideas, handling difficult content, pointing out stumbling blocks and uh, setting up the children for success in the, the rest of their week's work. So those are teacher led and the whole grade will connect to the teacher for their subject for that time. That's probably once a week for each subject. After that, what we do is two components of their work. Firstly, workshops and then coursework. The workshops are also synchronized sessions where a, a teacher will meet with a small group with a pod of eight and they will host pod of eight workshops where they look into, uh, let's do some activities together. Let me ask you some questions on the content that you're covering. You can ask me questions on the content that you're covering. So they're a lot more engaging, a lot more interactive in those pods of eight and they happen more frequently during the week. The third part of their engagement with their work is coursework. Uh, for each of the subjects, there will be an underlying course. For those of you who were with us last year, we use a platform called Thinkific. You're welcome to go and check out Thinkific. It is a very straightforward course player where we can load content in any form. We're talking uh, uh, text or videos or PDFs or voiceover or slide presentations, and it hosts it all in a seamless course player. Our teachers will design one Thinkific course per term. So when your child arrives for the first day of term two, they will pre be presented with their coursework for term two for every subject, which will be in the form of a Thinkific course for each subject. So they will have a Thinkific maths coursework course, one for science, one for geography, and so on. They're then able to work through that underlying course as fast as they want, provided they stay ahead of our minimum speed. And that's where the flexibility really comes in for you is if I know that next week my masterclass in science is going to be on acid-base reactions, then I just need to make sure that in my underlying coursework, I've at least reached that point um, in my course for science. And so we'll have those masterclasses also acting as a, a sort of pace setter for the young men and women to make sure that they're working at least at the required pace. And if they're working ahead of the minimum pace required in their underlying course, uh, that means that they have a little bit of flexibility in terms of um, uh, adjusting their timetable, focusing more on one subject than another during a day, um, traveling for a family event or, or whatever the case is. That's where that flexibility uh, will come in. A few things to note in general here as well. We are, like Jason said, we are IEB registered. And something to point out here at this, at this moment is uh, as a grade 10 parent, you are no longer required to register with the Department of Education as a homeschool family. So you're off the hook on that one. Um, you do not need to do the Department of Education registration. Um, that is only for children up till grade nine. From grade 10 and on, all you have to do is enroll with an accredited service provider, that's COA Academy. And we then submit information about learners and their marks directly to the IEB on your behalf. The IEB in turn are uh, uh, audited by Umalusi, who report to the Department of Education.
So those are the relationships there. Um, and like I said a moment ago, term one is going to be slightly different. So the structures that I've explained to you now will kick in in full from term two. In term one, what we're doing is we're going to be more synchronized than future terms. And this is for a few reasons. Firstly, it's to make, make sure that we are ready to pass on to your child all of their coursework on day one of the term. We don't want to drip feed it to them to the extent that they're always catching up and can't work ahead of us far enough. So we want to be significantly far ahead of them in terms of that coursework preparation. And so during term one, our teachers are preparing term two while they're teaching term one. And then during term two, our teachers are preparing term three while they're teaching term two and so on. And so at the start of every term, your child has full access to their coursework the whole term in advance. But that means that for term one, we're going to be more synchronized in how we do our teaching because we don't have that underlying coursework yet. Um, the other benefit that this has for us and the other reason that we've chosen to do it this way is that by being more synchronized in term one, we're making sure that we're all together on the same page. We need to make sure that every child who joins with Co Academy and everyone who's in our classes, we know who they are, we know at what stage they are, uh, we know what academic support they might need, and we need to be more responsive in those areas. And that happens best actually when we are a little bit more synchronized in terms of content delivery. So that's one of the real strengths of being a little bit more synchronized in terms of who's doing what on what day. And so what we'll be doing for our academic program in term one is rather than working through the Thinkific underlying courses, everything will be delivered to your child straight through their Google Classroom. We will still be using Google Classroom next term and on as a point of delivery for information. So for example, the way that your child will access their coursework in term two will be through their Google Classroom. But in term one, all of the content and information rather than being in the coursework will be delivered straight into their Google Classroom day by day so that they can see it in order of how it's being submitted to them. And the teacher will meet with them more regularly than the once a week masterclasses and the workshops. Uh, the way that we're going to be setting up your child's timetable for term one is for a given subject, they will have a blend of live and asynchronous lessons. So to take an example, I'm gonna pick maths. For maths, your child will have five lessons a week three of those lessons will be live lessons with Garth um, or with Jessica, depending on if they're doing maths core or maths literacy. And so they'll three times a week will be meeting for a live lesson with their teacher. And the teacher will be doing a mixture of what would feel like a masterclass or what would feel like a workshop. So those live lessons won't be called necessarily a masterclass or a workshop, but they'll take those sorts of forms where one day uh, Garth might decide to do more of a lecture style 30 minute session on important concepts. And in another live lesson, Garth might do something a little bit more collaborative, which might feel a little bit more like a workshop. But those will happen three live lessons a week. And then the other two maths lessons for the week will be asynchronous, which means we're not synchronized with each other in terms of timetable. We're not meeting online live. Um, your your uh, children will be accessing the content that we post straight into the Google Classroom um, in their own time for that day. Uh, and typically we stagger them. So it'll be one day will be live for maths. The next day will be asynchronous posted in the Google Classroom. The next day will be live and so on. And there'll be a mixture in the day of live classes and uh, posted work in the Google Classroom. And uh, you can expect that your child's live classes will be scheduled typically between nine and 12. So in that morning session is where we'll put all of the live classes they will have scatterings of asynchronized lessons as well in there, but all of the live lessons will fall in the morning. And then we can design the rest of their timetable individually. So one of the things that we'll be asking you to do as parents in the coming weeks is let us know if you'd like us to make any changes to uh, your child's timetable. You can say whether you'd like us to move subjects or expand the length of a subject or shorten it uh, based on what their needs are but the, the sort of fixed immovable ones will be their, their live lessons in the morning. In terms of subject choices, um, this is on our website and many of you have already submitted the form. I know Jason is desperate for more history learners and I am too. And I'm gonna start auditing Jason's class if more don't sign up because I'm really excited for that class. But uh, some of us have still not submitted our subject choices. Um, and so over the course of the next two days,
Jason is going to be meeting with each of the, the young men and women one on one to nail down their subject choices and get those subject choices in. Um, and then we'll be contacting you as the parents to give final approval and we will lock in those subject choices on Friday, meaning on Monday, your, your child will then have their, their personalized timetable and uh, we'll definitely know what subjects to allocate them to. In terms of the subject choices, just a reminder, we do the four compulsory subjects. This is compulsory for all South African schools, which is maths, English, Afrikaans, life orientation. When I say compulsory, uh, English and Afrikaans, obviously uh, compulsory is two languages which are both recognized South African languages. One as a home language, one as a first additional language. And we offer English home language and Afrikaans first additional language. We are proactively pursuing other South African languages to offer as a first additional language, which uh, we are hoping in the very near future to be able to build in um, just to keep you up to speed. Uh, the next one on the cards is Isizulu, uh, which we're very excited about. Um, and then hopefully more in the future as well. Um, but we'll keep you posted on those developments for now. We offer English home language, Afrikaans first additional language. And in terms of maths, um, some of you, the last time we spoke, we, we might have only been offering core mathematics. Uh, we're very happy to have Jessica on board, um, who's going to be doing mathematical literacy. So if you are one of the parents who submitted your subject choices and you indicated core mathematics, but actually you'd prefer mathematical literacy, please won't you get in touch with either myself or Jason uh, to chat through making that switch. But both of those are available at COA. And then in terms of electives, uh, we offer the five electives, physical sciences, life sciences, history, geography, and business studies. Again, with more on the cards, we're excited about development in this area too. Um, but until we do offer more subjects, we do offer uh, mixed provisioning as well. This is not our recommendation, but it is an option for you that if our, um, our elective subjects don't fit what you need or want for your child, then you can choose to do up to two electives with another service provider. So we do have a recommendation for a service provider that does IEB aligned single subject offerings. And so you can choose to do a particular IEB subject outside of COA Academy. And what we do then is we sign an agreement with that company. That company then does takes care of all of the teaching, learning and assessing for that subject. We don't have anything to do with the, the, the subject. But then as they get the marks at the end of each term, they then forward those marks to us and we put them on your child's report. And when we publish your child's report, it includes the marks for the elective subject that they're doing at the other uh, service provider. As I said, that's not our recommendation, just based on things like timetabling. We don't communicate with the other service provider in terms of when are live lessons scheduled, um, when are assessments scheduled. Uh, we do a, a very thorough job of things like making sure that assessments don't pile up on, on top of each other across our subject offering at COA. Um, and so it, it will definitely be more streamlined if we do all of the electives in-house. If you have chosen to do a mixed provisioning, um, if we've already been in touch, I'll be sending you uh, the forms for you to fill out for that mixed provisioning uh, by Friday. Um, if we haven't spoken about this before, please will you drop me an email and uh, we'll make sure that we get you those mixed provisioning forms. Okay, in terms of learner dashboards, we have learner dashboards from grade four to nine, and our learner dashboards are a way for us to track their ongoing progress. The dashboard that you can see in front of you here is actually for a grade four. Uh, they look very similar right across the grades, but it gives you a sense of how we track progress at Coa Academy, and it's ongoing and it's every day. You can see an update on their progress across their subject areas. Uh, we also have some other things on their dashboard like their daily timetable or badges for incentives. Uh, we also have a section on their dashboard, which is a CV. Uh, we are actively helping them build a CV in preparation for their grade 12 exit exam. We know that excellent marks are necessary and important for many uh, courses or universities in terms of application. Uh, but to be honest, these days, uh, good marks are sort of the foundation. And uh, from there, we need to be building on top of that. You know, universities more and more are, are not just looking at what were, your, what were your marks. They're looking at what type of person are you? What is your character? What are you interested in? Are you self-motivated? Do you operate outside of the, the sort of standard academic programs that your school offers? And so we really want to help uh, your, your boys and girls to build 
a strong CV that they can attach to a university or a workplace um, application to, to really uh, stand out um, and, and give a good impression on, on their character and who they are in their interests. So we'll be helping them develop that CV as well. But just to say, uh, in grade 10 and 11, they will be having a dashboard. It's not going to be launched right away. We're going to hold on to the dashboards for a little bit, and we'll be releasing their dashboard a little bit later this term. And uh, not all of the slides will be active initially, but as they come online, you'll be able to see things like their progress across the term. Uh, one of the things that we want you to be able to access at any point is you can log on at any time and see what is their current mark for business studies in term one. And you should be able to see at any point how they're performing in all of their subject areas. We don't want to hold on to that information and then only tell you in a report card at the end of the term. We want you to be able to log on to their dashboard at any point and see their progress across the subject areas. And so you'll be, you'll be getting access to that soon. A few quick thoughts to close off on. Uh, firstly, physical setup. This is something that uh, traditionally schools have always taken care of. Uh, you know, we think of the, the, the desk and the chair. Um, and uh, when our child transitions from a physical school to our own home to do online schooling, one of the things that we really need to be intentional about is their physical setup. So I'd really encourage you to take a moment to go into your child's space and think to yourself, what would it be like to spend a few hours uh, every day in this physical space, engaging with work, engaging with learning? Um, uh, there's a, 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 an organization in uh, the US uh, called Primer, and uh, Primer are a homeschool related organization. And um, I was reading a really interesting article by Primer the other day, and they were saying that uh, they did a, a bunch of investigation into what is the number one thing that a homeschooling family should do for their child in order to set them up for academic success. Let me, let me say that again. I'm, I'm not saying to set them up for social emotional success. I'm not saying to set them up for, uh, you know, I'm saying academic success. So we want as, as online schools to equip you as homeschooling families, because that's essentially what you're doing is you're schooling from home uh, through an online service provider. What is the one thing that you can do as a family to set your child up for success academically? And that after their research, they discovered that the number one thing was safety, which is a weird thing to say, but it's, it's physical safety and emotional safety. It's the idea of, I feel comfortable, I feel safe, and I feel happy in my space. And we're not just talking about safety in terms of the roof's not going to fall on my head. We're talking about things like, I feel comfortable in the space because of the lighting and because of the temperature and because of the chair that I'm sitting on and the height of the desk. Um, you know, things like uh, a dining room table seems like a good option for uh, sort of a, a workstation, but actually dining room tables were designed for adults uh, to eat food at, not for children to do work at. And so there are little things that we can think through. How can we optimize the physical space that when my child sits down to do their work, they go, oh, this feels good. I feel comfortable. I feel happy. I feel safe. I want to engage with this space. And so one of the things that we're doing is we're teaming up with a company called HF Design. You can just Google their name and they'll pop right up. HF Design are a company based in Joburg. Um, it's a husband and wife team. Um, he is a carpenter and she is an architect. And together they have started designing furniture specifically for homeschool families. And so if this is something that you'd be interested in, go and check out HF Design. And when you get there, uh, you can enter a Co Academy promo code and they'll give you a percentage off of your order and ship to you um, custom-made furniture just for your child. Um, it's also very reasonably priced and stylish. I'm a big fan of what they're doing. Uh, we do have a few partnerships with different companies like this. Um, and so as, as we send out information to parents, we'll be sure to include promo codes and information on how you can get discounts at companies like HF Design. I'll be sure to include that in this week's mailer. Every Friday, we have a, a weekly email uh, that goes out to all of our families. It's called From the COA Desk. So keep an eye out for From the COA Desk. Um, uh, that'll come out on this Friday. And I'll be sure to include a, a link to HF Design as well as the promo code for them. And uh, on that note, the next two points on my list here, firstly, communication channels and whitelist Co Academy. Um, whitelisting Co Academy means um, many of our email service providers have automatic spam filters. 
Koa Academy has probably emailed you from one or two different email accounts, and those might be going into your primary inbox from by now. But we do also occasionally send out emails from a mass mailer, a group mailer. It still comes from Koa Academy, but that often ends up in promotional folders um, in, your, in your email. So please keep an eye out for any of those that are going to either your promotional folders or your spam and drag them across to your inbox and whitelist us. Make sure that we're going to your primary inbox so that you don't miss out on important information uh, or partnerships with other organizations like that. Um, other forms of communication uh, for you to be aware of. Firstly, email us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, you, are, you can email any of your class teachers, any of your subject teachers, your pod teacher. Feel free to drop me an email. We do just ask that you, you give us 24 hours to respond. Our staff are probably hard at work uh, with uh, their, their subjects and with their teaching and their prep. And so uh, we've asked them to take uh, at least uh, no more than 24 hours to, to get back to, to your queries. Um, if you need something uh, and would like a quicker answer, feel free to give our school a call. You'll go through to Tegan, who's our administrator, and uh, she'll be able to direct you to the right person uh, or schedule a meeting for you. Um, in terms of other contacts along the bottom, uh, you can reach Tegan, our administrator, on hello at coacademy.com. Uh, Debbie on the, uh, on the IT desk is available at IT at. Um, as I mentioned, our teachers are first name at. Um, you can email me for any school-wide issues on mark at. And then uh, for fees, uh, you can get in touch with Lauren at. Um, last thing to say is term dates and holidays. So this term, our term is obviously a little bit more synchronized than other terms. And so our term dates are fairly set for this term. Uh, we start now tomorrow with orientation. I believe we run until the 25th of, of March. You'll have to check the parent information booklet to confirm that I'm correct on that. Um, I hope that I'm correct on that. Um, and then starting from next term on, obviously, with that underlying course work that the children will be able to work through, there'll be a little bit more flexibility in terms of their term dates. And so what I'd ask you to do, if you do not want to follow our suggested term dates, which we published in the uh, parent information booklet, which you should have received a couple months ago by now, uh, if you signed up with us back then, um, is have a look at that calendar. And if our suggested term dates don't match your preference or what you would like, please won't you get in touch with me as early as possible. And we'll look at shifting your term dates and how to accommodate your needs um, and your family rhythms uh, and, and see what we can make work there. Uh, those underlying courses will be available to your child uh, even when Co Academy is closed. Um, and so even though your child might not be having live lessons or workshops, uh, they'll be able to, to access uh, uh, their, their underlying coursework. Last thing to say is just we're really excited about all of the other things, all of the other engagements that's going to be happening at Co Academy. Uh, we have some really exciting things on the cards. Um, keep an ear out for us. We're, we're going on to, I know that we're on Lotus FM and uh, SAFM and we'll be on Cape Talk and a few other radio stations have actually invited us to come and share some of the things that are happening at Co Academy rather than just doing paid ads, which is really exciting. Uh, we're we're going to be talking about some uh, things like uh, events like the doctor will explain you now. Some of you have attended those events already where we get PhD uh, 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 doctorates to come and explain their uh, doctoral thesis in 10 minutes to a 10 year old is the task that we give them. And so they come in and they, they share their, their doctoral thesis and we want the kids engaging with real world experts and being opened up to sort of the world of academia in, a, in an interesting way. And so events like that, we've got our, our social events that happen regularly. And we'll be having learner socials at least once every two weeks online. Uh, we have chess socials. We also have COA clubs, which will be happening every Thursday. So if your child's interested in baking, there's a baking club, there's a book club, but there's um, all sorts of interesting clubs that are happening. Um, and there are a bunch of other events for you as well. We'll be having parents events uh, where we're getting together with parents and we'll combine you with uh, the high school parents. So you'll join the grade eight and nine parents as well. And we'll do some parent socials. You'll get to meet parents who are in your area from Co Academy. Um, and, and we'll also have some family socials where you get to invite people from outside uh, the Co community to come and join us. And of course, we'll be doing in-person events. So we're coming to your area soon. Uh, we'll be visiting uh, Cape Town, jo Joburg, and Durban this term and doing some in-person socials. And it would be great to see you there. And you'll get to meet the broader Co community, which grade four to nine is absolutely booming on the back of last year's growth. 
And so it'll be great to get you plugged into that broader community. But that's it for me for now. I am going to have a look at the chat because I did see that a couple of questions uh, came through. Yes, thank you, Garth. <laughs> Garth confirmed. Jason popped in the HF design uh, link for you to go and check out. Salt Rock, <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Didn't I say Durban? What did I? I can't remember. Did I say Durban? Okay. We're coming to Salt Rock this term. The Durban event is going to be in Salt Rock. Uh, we'll have to schedule it there for you guys. Um, are there any other questions about uh, anything that I've chatted through or something that I've missed? No. All quiet. Wonderful. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, I hope that that's good news. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments or would just like to engage on something uh, to do with your, your child of COA, uh, we are big on engagements in case you haven't worked that out yet. Um, and so we would love for you to reach out to us um, and, and let us know. Um, but thank you so much for making some time uh, to meet with us tonight. And uh, we look forward to, to seeing uh, the young men and women uh, class of 2023-2024 um, and uh, we're really hoping for a really exciting first term and just launching into that second term and beyond so thank you to the teachers for making some time to be with us here tonight I uh, really appreciate your time as well thank you very much everybody have a good one thank thanks you Mark. have a nice evening thanks a lot thanks take care cheers everybody bye-bye cheers